As the sun was going down, I was walking on the rough path of the Appalachian Trail. The air was fresh, and the sound of leaves moving could be heard in the quiet. I was all by myself, far from any town, with just my backpack and my will to keep me going. Suddenly, I saw someone coming out of the thick forest. An old man, looking tired and worn out, came onto the path. His clothes were old and his boots were covered in mud. He had a big backpack, and his eyes looked like he had seen a lot in his life. I felt a chill. I was far from any town, and this stranger just appeared out of nowhere. We gave each other a quick nod, a quiet hello, and kept going our own ways. As I kept walking, I couldn't stop thinking about the old man. Who was he? Why was he out here all by himself? I had so many questions, but I decided to ignore them and focus on the path ahead. A few hours later, I met a group of hikers. They were talkative and full of life, very different from the quiet I had been in. They asked me if I had seen an old man on the trail. I said yes, remembering the tired-looking man I had seen earlier. They got excited as they told me that the man was Earl Schaefer, the first man to walk the entire Appalachian Trail. He was doing it for the second time, they said, something very few people have done. I was shocked. The old man I had met without thinking much was a real-life hero. I had been so quick to worry, to let fear take over, but here was this man, much older than me doing something most people wouldn't even think of. As I kept hiking, I felt a new respect for Earl Schaefer. His willpower, his strength, it was amazing. The trail didn't seem so tough anymore, but more like a challenge, a test of strength and will. As the sun went down and the stars came out, I set up my tent for the night. Meeting Earl Schaefer had changed how I saw things. I wasn't just a hiker on a trail. I was part of a bigger group a group of people who loved exploring the outdoors. The next morning, as I packed my stuff and started walking, I couldn't help but smile. The path ahead was long and tough, but I was ready. After all, if Earl Schaefer could do it, so could I. The sun was starting to go down as I started my walk in the big open area of Yellowstone. The air was fresh, smelling like pine trees and a river somewhere far off. My shoes made noise on the small rocks on the path, the only sound in the quiet around me. Out of nowhere, something moved fast. Up in the sky, an osprey was flying around, its eyes looking at the river below. I watched, amazed, as it closed its wings and fell, going towards the water really fast. It went under the water with a big splash that I could hear in the quiet woods. My heart was beating fast as I waited, the seconds felt really long. Just when I started to get worried, the bird came out of the water, a fish moving in its claws. It was an amazing sight, showing the strong and beautiful side of nature. I kept walking, the picture of the osprey catching the fish stuck in my mind. The woods seemed to wake up around me, every sound of leaves and far-off bird noise reminding me of the wild place I was walking through. As it got darker, I walked back to the start of the trail, the day's fun still in my mind. The sight of the osprey, its fall, and successful rise from the water was a show I knew I would always remember. Back at my camp, I sat by the fire, the flames making long shadows on the trees. The woods were full of the sounds of the night, a mix of nature sounds that was both spooky and nice. As I started to fall asleep, the picture of the osprey and its fish played in my mind, a reminder of the wild beautiful side of Yellowstone. In the end, my walk was more than just a trip through the woods. It was a trip into the middle of nature, a look into how life works, and a sign of how strong the wild is. And as I closed my eyes, the sound of the osprey's call was in my ears, a spooky bedtime song that would always remind me of my fun time in Yellowstone. It was a clear Christmas day in Missouri. My wife and I, dressed in our warmest clothes, decided to go for a short walk on the snowy trails. The air was fresh and lively. Everything around us was quiet and calm. As we walked along the path, we saw an old man hiking by himself. He was an unusual sight, not because he was old or alone, but because he had a parrot on his shoulder. It was a big bird, 
Its feathers were bright and colorful against the white snow. It was about two and a half feet long. I didn't know much about different types of parrots, but this one was different from any I'd seen before. The man and his parrot moved together, as if they were one. The parrot would sometimes flap its wings, but it never left the man's shoulder. It was a strange sight, but we just thought it was another hiker with his pet. As we kept walking, we couldn't stop thinking about the man and his parrot. There was something weird about them. The woods seemed to get quieter, the air colder. We walked faster, wanting to get back home where it was warm. All of a sudden, we heard a loud noise from the trees. We turned around and saw the parrot flying towards us. Its eyes looked scared, and it was making a lot of noise. We stopped, not sure what to do. The parrot flew around us, making more and more noise. Then, just as quickly as it had come, the parrot flew away, disappearing into the trees. We stood there, our hearts beating fast, as the quiet of the woods surrounded us. We rushed back to our car, the image of the man and his parrot stuck in our minds. When we finally got home, we felt relieved. Meeting the man and his parrot had turned our peaceful walk into a scary adventure. We were safe now, but we would always remember that Christmas Day walk. It was a strong reminder that even in places you know well, you can come across things you don't expect. I've always loved going on adventures. Living in Washington State, I was lucky to have some of the best hiking trails in the U.S. One bright morning, I decided to hike the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Mount Rainier National Park. The trail was famous for its amazing views of Mount Rainier and the mountain landscape. It was a tough trail, but I was ready. I had my backpack with water, snacks, a map, and a first aid kit. I wore my strong hiking boots and a hat to keep the sun off. As I started my hike, the beauty of the trail took my breath away. The path was surrounded by quiet forests, river valleys, and meadows. The sight of Mount Rainier, rising high into the clouds, was incredible. A few hours into my hike, I noticed the weather starting to change. The sunny sky was replaced by dark clouds. A storm was coming. I walked faster, hoping to find a shelter before the rain started. Suddenly, I heard a loud noise. I turned around to see a big tree falling towards me. I jumped out of the way just in time, but my backpack was crushed under the tree. My supplies were all over the trail. I was scared but not hurt. However, the storm was now here. Rain was falling hard, making the trail slippery and dangerous. I knew I had to find shelter quickly. I saw a small cave nearby and decided to stay there. The cave was dry and protected me from the wind and rain. I spent the night there, listening to the storm outside. When morning came, the storm had passed. I stepped out of the cave to a world cleaned by the rain. The air was fresh, and the sun was shining brightly. I felt a sense of relief. I picked up what was left of my supplies and continued my hike. The rest of the journey was calm and I reached the end of the trail by late afternoon. I was tired, but the feeling of achievement was great. Looking back at the mountain, I felt a deep respect for nature and its unpredictable power. That hike was a reminder of how small we are compared to nature, but it also showed me how strong we can be when faced with challenges. It was a day I would never forget. It was my third day alone in the big, wild area of northern Ontario. I was paddling my canoe through the quiet water, surrounded by thick trees and the quiet that only comes from being out in nature. The only sounds were the splash of my paddle and the occasional bird call. As I turned a corner, I saw something strange on the shore. There was a figure lying on a rock half in the water. My heart was beating fast as I tried to see what it was. It looked like a person a young woman, lying in a way that didn't look right. I was scared, and I felt a chill run down my back. It felt like I was in a scary movie, the kind where you shout at the screen for the main character not to go any closer. But this was real, and I was the one getting closer, my mind filled with scary thoughts. I started to shout, my voice bouncing off the trees, 
hoping that she was just sleeping in a really weird place. Each time I moved my paddle, I got closer, my heart beating louder with each second. The quiet of the wild was now filled with the loud sound of my own fear. As I got closer to the rock, I could see her better. Her clothes were wet, her hair spread out around her head like a dark circle. She didn't move. She didn't answer my calls. My heart felt like it was going to jump out of my chest. And then, just as I was close enough to touch her, she moved. She sat up, looking confused at me. I felt a wave of relief, so strong that I almost tipped the canoe. She was alive. She was just sleeping, in the weirdest place on earth. I will never forget those five minutes of pure fear. The relief, the tiredness, the understanding of how quickly a calm trip can turn into a nightmare. It was a clear reminder of how unpredictable nature can be, and how delicate life is. As I paddled away, leaving the woman to her odd choice of nap spot, I couldn't help but feel a new respect for the wild. It was beautiful, it was calm, but it was also rough and wild. It was a place of peace and quiet, but also a place where danger could be hiding in the most unexpected places. It was a lesson I would remember long after I left the park, a reminder of the thin line between adventure and danger, between life and death. I've always loved hiking. Living in Colorado, I had some of the best hiking paths right at my doorstep. One of my top picks was the Devil's Head Lookout, famous for its wide views from the fire tower. The trail was a fair 2.9 mile round trip, going up about 950 feet. It was a well-used path, twisting through thick forests of pine and aspen trees, with some wildflowers here and there adding a bit of color. The trail had a series of zigzags, slowly leading up to the lookout tower at the top. One day, I chose to hike the trail by myself. The weather was just right clear skies and a light breeze. I started my hike early in the morning, the sun casting long shadows through the trees. The forest was full of the sounds of nature, like birds singing and leaves rustling. It was calm and quiet. As I went up, the trail got steeper and rougher. I could see the lookout tower far away, a small dot against the huge sky. I walked faster, excited to get to the top. Suddenly, I heard a rustling sound behind me. I looked back, but saw nothing. I thought it was just a squirrel or a bird and kept hiking. But the rustling sound didn't stop, it got louder with each step I took. I could feel my heart beating fast, a feeling of worry starting to creep in. I walked even faster the lookout tower now clearly in sight. But the rustling sound turned into a growl, a deep, throaty sound that gave me goosebumps. I started to run, panting heavily. At last, I reached the lookout tower, quickly shutting the door behind me. I climbed up to the top, my heart beating loudly in my ears. I looked out at the wide view, the beauty of the landscape a sharp contrast to the fear inside me. I stayed in the tower until the sun set, the growling sound slowly fading away. As the sun went down, I started my way down the trail, my flashlight cutting through the dark. I got to my car just as the last light of the day disappeared, feeling a wave of relief. That night, I lay in bed, thinking about what happened that day. I realized that the beauty of nature could also be scary, a lesson I would remember for all my future hikes. Despite the fright, I knew I would go back to the trail, the call of the wild too strong to ignore. The sun was just starting to rise as I began my early morning walk in Big Bear, California. The air was fresh and a bit chilly, filled with the smell of pine trees and wet soil. The path was peaceful, with only the occasional sound of leaves rustling and birds singing in the distance. Out of nowhere, the quiet was broken by a scary sound the howl of a coyote. It sounded far off, bouncing off the trees, but it made me shiver. I tried to calm myself down, reminding myself that coyotes are usually more scared of people than we are of them. As I rounded a bend in the path, my heart jumped. There, just a few steps away, was a coyote. It was the first time I'd ever seen one up close. We locked eyes, and for a moment, we just stared at each other. I could see its wildness, 
the natural instinct of a creature that lives in the wild. I didn't know what to do, so I just stood still. The coyote looked just as surprised, its ears standing straight up and its body stiff. Scared, I stepped back, putting some space between us. Luckily, I had cell service. I quickly looked up what to do when you encounter a coyote. The advice was straightforward be bold and walk towards it. Most wild animals, including coyotes, are more likely to run away than attack. Taking a deep breath, I turned back towards the coyote. It was still there, watching me carefully. I started walking towards it, trying to look bigger and keeping eye contact. The coyote stayed put for a moment longer before it finally turned and walked away, disappearing into the bushes. I breathed a sigh of relief, my heart still racing. The rest of the walk was calm, but seeing the coyote was a strong reminder of the wildness that still exists in our world, even in places as familiar as Big Bear. As I headed back to the start of the trail, the sun was fully up, bathing the landscape in a warm light. Seeing the coyote was scary, but it was also thrilling. It reminded me of why I love walking the chance to experience nature in its purest form, to feel a part of something bigger than myself. In the end, the walk was more than just a physical journey. It was an emotional one too. It was a reminder of the power of nature and the respect it deserves. And as I left the trail, I took with me not just the memory of the coyote, but a renewed sense of wonder and appreciation for the wild. My friend and I were setting up our tent as the sun was going down. We were in a big open area where Nevada, Arizona, and Utah meet. It was quiet and peaceful, just what we needed to get away from the city. Out of nowhere, we heard a quad bike coming our way. We saw a cloud of dust getting bigger and the noise getting louder. My heart was racing as the bike stopped at our campsite. The man on the bike was Ammon Bundy. Even though this was before the standoffs, we knew who he was. He didn't talk much. Just him being there was enough to scare us. He looked around our campsite, at our tent, our car, and the fire we just started. We could feel the tension. Without saying anything, he let us know that this was his land and we were only there because he was letting us. The rest of the night was a blur. Bundy left as quickly as he came, leaving us feeling uneasy. The sounds of the night seemed louder and the dark felt heavier. Every little noise made us jump. Even though we were scared, we decided to stay the night. We knew we had the right to be there. But after meeting Bundy, our camping trip didn't feel the same. We felt like we were being watched and that we weren't welcome. When the sun came up, we packed up our stuff. The beautiful sunrise couldn't make us forget about the night before. We were glad to leave. The open land now felt more scary than inviting. Meeting Bundy was a reminder of the unspoken rules of the wild. It taught us to respect the land, the people who live there, and the balance between humans and nature. It was a camping trip we would always remember. I've always loved going on adventures. So, when I decided to take a trip alone to Wyoming, it seemed like the perfect chance to see some new things. I picked Norris Campground in Yellowstone National Park as my place to stay. It was a great spot for people who love to explore, surrounded by tall mountains, big canyons, and lots of natural hot springs. The campground was really big, with 100 spots for tents or campers, all under a forest of pine trees. There was a trail that was only a mile long that you could take to get to the Norris Geyser Basin. The trail also went by the Museum of the National Park Ranger, a cool place where you could learn a lot. One evening, as the sun was going down, I decided to rent a cabin near the campground. The cabin was simple and made of wood, fitting right in with the wilderness around it. Inside, it was comfy and warm, with a small fireplace in one corner and a single window that looked out at the thick forest. When night came, the forest was full of the sounds of animals and nature. The call of an owl, the sound of leaves moving, the far-off howl of a wolf. It was a bit spooky, but also kind of nice. I sat by the window, watching the moonlight make long shadows on the ground. All of a sudden, I heard a weird noise. It was a low growl, 
coming from somewhere outside the cabin. My heart was beating fast as I slowly went to the window. Looking out into the dark, I saw two glowing eyes looking back at me. It was a bear, its big body lit up by the moonlight. I quickly moved away from the window, my mind racing. I knew I was safe inside the cabin, but knowing there was a bear outside was scary. I spent the rest of the night on edge, listening to the sounds of the bear as it moved around the cabin. When morning came, I carefully went outside. The bear was gone, and all that was left were its footprints. I felt a wave of relief. I had made it through a night in the wilderness, all by myself and without getting hurt. The rest of my time at the Norris campground was pretty normal. I spent my days hiking the trails and my nights safe in my cabin. Seeing the bear was a strong reminder of how powerful and wild nature can be. It was an exciting experience, one that I'll remember for the rest of my life. When it was time to pack up and leave, I took one last look at the cabin. It had been my home for a few days, a safe place in the middle of the wilderness. I felt thankful for the experience and had a new respect for nature. I left the Norris campground feeling proud and with a story to tell. A story of adventure, survival, and the amazing power of nature. I was living in the pretty state of Montana, famous for its amazing views and big open spaces. My house was close to the Apgar campground, a top-rated campsite in the state. It was in the Glacier National Park, a real gem of the state. The campground was big, with nearly 200 spots. It was near Lake McDonald and connected to the west end of the 50-mile going to the Sun Road. The area was a dream come true for those who love nature, with its awesome views of icy landscapes and the calm waters of the lake. One day, I decided to go for a walk in the woods near my small town. The sun was going down, making long shadows that moved with the rustling leaves. The air was fresh, filled with the smell of pine and wet soil. As I went deeper into the woods, I found an old cabin. It was old and worn out, a leftover from a time long gone. Feeling curious, I went up to the cabin. The door was a bit open, making a creepy sound as the wind blew. I pushed it open and looked inside. The cabin was dark and smelled old, filled with the smell of rot. And then I saw it. A big creature was standing inside. It was unlike anything I had ever seen. It was tall and bulky, covered in rough fur. Its eyes shone in the dim light, giving me the chills. I was scared. I turned and ran as fast as I could, the creature's deep growl following me. I didn't stop until I got to my house. I locked the doors and windows, my heart beating fast. In the days that followed, I couldn't forget about the creature. I stayed away from the woods, the image of the cabin stuck in my mind. But life had to continue. I went on with my daily routine, even though I felt a bit uneasy. One day, while talking to a local ranger, I mentioned the cabin and the creature. The ranger looked serious. He told me that there had been sightings of a big bear in the area. It had probably found shelter in the old cabin. He assured me that they were keeping an eye on the situation and would make sure the residents were safe. The news was both worrying and comforting. It was a bear not some mythical creature. It was a part of the wilderness, a reminder of the wild beauty of Montana. I felt relieved. Life went back to normal, but the memory of that day stayed, an exciting part of my life in the Montana wilderness.